Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name's Joe. In this video, I will be doing a playthrough, an example of the game Hockey Blast Express from Play Classic. And this one is obviously the Express version of the Hockey Blast game, which I've done a video or two on earlier in my uh, channel career here. And so this one is, as you as you can see, the Express version, which means it's fast play. Now the the full game doesn't really take all that long to play, but this one is much, much quicker. And I'm just going to kind of go through, you know, how the game works as we play it. And so it'll take a little bit longer than it would once you get the system down. But this uh, really is just designed to kind of show how it plays. And I'm actually going to use a season that I brewed up myself. It's the 1952-53 NHL season. And I did the um, Stanley Cup Finals. This is uh, game one, so Boston Bruins at Montreal Canadiens at the Forum. And this was a game that was won historically by the Habs 4-2. to two. So we're going to get started here. A couple notes about setup. We have our three, three cards here, and you can see that they have die, um, die faces in five areas. And we have cards, player cards lined up underneath those. These are the Bruins, these are the Canadiens. And the, um, you basically you take 15 players and you make five piles of three. Doesn't matter what the order is because it basically is random anyway based on the, di the dice that are rolled. Goalies go under the goalie and the bench players go underneath the goalies. So I kind of tried to match up the starting lineups a little bit, but the Canadians actually played some people that didn't even play in the regular season and therefore I, don't, I did not card them when I did this season. So they're not um, they're not shown, but um, so I had to kind of jury rig it a little bit. But this is for just for example purposes anyway, so not a big deal. Uh, so the goalies, the starting goalies in that game were Jim Henry for the Bruins and Jacques Plant for the Canadiens. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to roll uh, three dice: red, white, uh, red, black, and white. This will be kind of off camera, but I'll just show you what the rolls are. So. Here, we, here you can see we've got a red 5, a black 1, and a white 6. So the way this works is if you roll a red 1 or a red 6, that indicates that it's a scoring chance. And there are um, home, there's a, a card for the home scoring chance when you roll a red 6 and a visiting scoring chance when you roll a white 6. And then you would take the black and white die results and figure out what um, you'd get like a, a scoring chance, basically. When it's not a one or a six, then things work a little bit differently, where you end up comparing two players from the two teams, either for playmaking qualities or penalty ratings. So if the red dies are two, four, or five, which it is, it's a five, you do a one-on-one -on -one quality check with the players indicated on the black for the home and white for the visitor die. So in this case, we rolled a black one, so that would be Butch Bouchard, as the Canadians are home. And we rolled a white six, which is interesting. Oh, di dice rolls, die rolls of six are choice player. That's right. So I can choose whoever I want from the uh, visitor visiting team. Then you re-roll the red die and check for the quality per the dis distribution on the Blue Express game uh, board, which is right here. So we'll roll the red die again, and we got a six. So six is star. So I was just going to use these two. Um, obviously, neither one of these guys has the quality. So there's no scoring chance, and we uh, rotate our players to the bottom. And that is the first of the periods, and there are... Uh, four five-minute segments per period. So that would be the first five minutes of the game. We have no scoring. So we just kind of repeat this process, and we roll again. And this time we got a red six, a white four, and a black six. Make sure you can see those. So we have a six, and when you have a red six, you use this card here, which is the home scoring chance. Now you get the, uh, the, you read the black die first, so that's a 64. And a 64 is home defense stop, breakaway chance, visiting goalie must make spectacular save. So now we look at Jim Henry's card because he's the visiting goalie. And you can see he's got spectacular save three. 
So we roll one die, and if it's a three or less, he makes the save. It's a four. If it's four to six, the uh, Canadians have scored. It is a six, so the Canadians have scored. Okay, so now what we do is we roll two dice and add them together for our scorer finder. And we get a six and a four, which is a 10. So we get the second best shot rating. So looking at the guys who are face up um, or at the top of the stacks, I should say, you've got Maurice Richard. So Maurice Richard has scored a goal. And that makes it um, one nothing. So in this case, since it was a breakaway goal, I'm going to give it a um, no, no assist. So it's just Richard unassisted. There are some other results where it says a player creates a goal, in which case you can use your kind of judgment, it says, to determine if he gets an assist or if he is the goal scorer. And when you score in a segment, you actually don't move to the next segment. You continue the same segment. So we roll again in the same segment. And this time we get a red four and a, uh, two fives, five, uh, five and five. So the four, we're gonna check five and five. So we're checking these two guys. We're gonna roll this again and we get a three. And a three is power. So Gamble has power, but Quackenbush does not. So you get a goal chance here. So we roll the red die and check the goalie's play save and he's got a, um, he's a three and a half, so I have a decider die here. So the decider die is basically like a 50-50 die, and we're gonna roll that as well. And if it's, if the green dot appears, then it is, it is a four, and if it doesn't, it's a three. So if he rolls lower than a three, either way, it's, it's gonna be a save. And we rolled a two with the, with the dot, so that would have been a four, so. That is a, uh, a save. That is a save for Henry. It stays 1-1. One, one. We're halfway through the first period, and now we will move on to the next segment. This time we get a 1, which is going to be a scoring chance for the visitors, and our number is 35. So we pull out the visiting score, score visitor scoring card, and the 35 is visitor player in 2, creates goal with quality roll or... Um, Triangle. So the quality, we re roll the red for the quality check. Or if he has a triangle, he doesn't need to roll. So two is Woody DeMart. He does not have a triangle. So we need to roll to see if he gets one of these qualities. It's a six, which is a star. He does not have star. So that is not going to be a goal. And so that is the third of the segments for the first period. And now we've got the final segment for period one. And we roll a three this time on the red, which is gonna be something different that we have yet to see. And a six and a three, black and white. So when we roll a three, you do a one-on-one -on -one comparison of the penalty ratings of the players indicated on the, die, on the black and white dice. So we have six, which is again, choice. So for the home, we can choose whoever we want. We know, I guess we could just pick one of the guys with zero, like John McCormick or Floyd Curry. The Bruins, however, have to go with three, which is Leo Labine, who has a 1.5 rating. So that player gets a penalty. So Labine gets a penalty. Um, actually, I did not, I think I forgot to swap these guys. So I need to do that. Okay, so now we get a power play opportunity, and we again have to roll against Henry's play save. And it's again a two and a, and a green dot on the decider die. Not that that really matters in this case. So that is also a save. So we're going to rotate our players. So we'll say it was Curry and Labine. And because no, nothing was scored, that is the end of the period, and the period ends with the Canadians winning one to nothing. Okay, on to the second period. We're gonna get that we're gonna get rolling right right off the top here. And we got a three again on the red, so we're gonna have another penalty check, and it's two and five this time, or five and two. So five on the home team is meager, and two on the Bruins is Godfrey, and they're both zero, uh, they're both point five. 
So there's no power play and we rotate back and we go to the next segment. So segment two. And this time we get a six, which means a home, home team scoring chance, 43. Any home player with a triangle creates a goal. Well, Olmstead has one, so does Geoffreyon. So what we'll do here is we're going to say Olmstead created it and Geoffreyon will score it. So we're going to, uh, I guess that means we'll rotate down. And it's 2 nothing Montreal. So we've got a goal, Geoffreyon from Olmstead. 2 nothing Montreal. We continue segment two of the second period and we get a three. So that's a penalty check. Doug Harvey with a one and Real Chevrofil at 0.5. So Harvey's going to get a penalty and we're going to get a power play chance. And so we'll roll to see if Plant can save it. He can. He rolls a three. His play save is a five. So he's extremely difficult to score upon. I'm going to rotate both these guys. And we go to the... Uh, third segment, two to one. No, I'm sorry, two nothing. Two nothing. And we get another penalty check. This time it's six for the home team and two for the road team. So Kluke is a 0.5. And we'll use um, McCormick for the uh, for the Canadians. And we'll roll. And we get a three. And that's not going to be a goal. So we'll rotate both these guys down and we'll go to the fourth and final segment of the second period. This time we get a four and a three, two. So four again, we're going to do a quality check. Um, so we have to re-roll the red die and we got a four again. So this time it's hit and it's three, which is Dickie Moore who does have hit. And two is Woody Dumart, who does not. So if the one player has it and the other one doesn't, the advantage team gets a goal chance. So we again have to check the, whoops, the save. And it's a one, so that's going to be a save. So that is the end of the second period. And we go on to the third with a two to one, uh, two nothing in favor of Montreal. First segment of the third period, we get a four, four, five. So we're going to check the quality that we're going to be testing. It's again a four, so it's again hit. Four here is Billy Ray, who does not have it. And I forgot to rotate these guys. So I need to do that. I sometimes do this, forget to rotate. So that's four and five over here is Sanford and he also does not have hit. So neither guy has it. Nothing happens. We go to the second segment and we get a three, which is a penalty check. And it's a three and a five. So the three here is McCormick, who's a zero and a five is Tapazini, who's a 0.5. So again, we have a possible penalty. We have a penalty and a power play for Montreal. And we rolled a three which is lower than his play save, so no score there. So we go to the third segment of the third period, and we get a one, which is a scoring chance for Boston. And a 34 is visitor player in one creates goal with a quality roll or triangle. So this is Dave Creighton. He does not have a triangle, so let's check for the quality. It's a five, which is smart, and he does have smart, so he creates a goal. So he will get the assist, and we will give the goal to. Uh, we'll give the goal to. Whoops, Tapazzini. <laughs> caught that. Caught my sleeve on there. So Jerry Tapazzini gets a goal from Creighton. Um, and it's two to one, and we continue the third segment. And this time we get another three. All right, a six, so a home scoring chance. 45 is the number. And 45 is any home player with a star creates a power play goal. Um, 
None of them have it, so there is no goal there. And we go to the fourth and final segment of the third period. We get a two, so we're doing a quality check, and we got a four and a four, so it's going to be Martin and Ray. And the quality we're checking is hit. Neither guy has it, so that's going to end the game, and it's going to end as a two to one uh, Canadians victory over the Bruins in game one, a game they historically won four to two. Um, but you get an idea of how the game plays. And again, this is a home brewed season, so you may get better results if you play with, um, you know, a more current season. I also might have screwed something up. One thing I did not mention is in a situation like this, where we ended up with triples, if we had rolled that originally, then you, uh, you would get a fight with a, with triple fours or triple fives is a fight. Triple six is an injury to a visiting player. Triple one is an injury to the home player. Triple twos or triple threes are critical face-offs, which can lead to a um, a goal on the opposing based on the opposing um, goalie spec save, spectacular save rating. So you can kind of see how this works. If you've played the full version of Hockey Blast, you know that it's it uses the qualities and the shot rating. Scissors mean a below average. Uh, stars mean above average in terms of shot and assists. You have your qualities, you also have your symbols, and your symbols can, um, they have var various effects, depend on, um, you know, offense, defense, etc. Um, I won't go into all the details on that, but this is this kind of um, uses the same kind of thought and design in it, uh, just even more abstracted than, than the base game. And the base game plays very, very well. I really enjoy the Blast games. Um, Again, I have not yet played a play game that I did not enjoy a whole lot. So, um, you know, there is a an express version of History Maker Baseball, and there is also an express version of Second Season Football. And I have both those games, and I I don't know if I've done videos. F I know I didn't. I know I haven't done one for Second Season. I'm not sure if I haven't if I've done one or not for History Maker Baseball. But I do have both those games, and I enjoy them. But uh, that is going to do it for this video. I do appreciate you guys checking it out. And um, please feel free to comment, correct any mistakes I may have made, because I may certainly have made them. Absolutely. Um, oh, I could have done this, the empty net mini chart. Where, you know, I mean, let's do it just for fun, right? So I'm going to roll, I'll roll the black and the white. And we got an eight. And an eight is eight, nine, ten, game over. So nothing happened. Stayed two to one. But uh, yeah, if you have any comments, corrections, questions, etc., feel free to post them up. I will reply as best I can. Uh, otherwise, please consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing to help support the channel. That's always greatly appreciated by me. But uh, that will do it. My name's Joe. This has been the Hexed Encounter Channel Sports Edition. And until next time, happy gaming.